Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're talking about isotopes and mass spectrometry. So review really quickly about our square off the periodic table. We have our atomic mass, which is our protons and electrons in a neutral atom, our symbol, our name, and the bottom is the atomic mass. Now, have you ever wondered why this is in a decimal place? What this is, is protons plus neutrons. We cannot have part of a proton or part of a neutron, so how in the world does it become a decimal in the first place? Well, that's part about um, isotopes. We have lots of different variations of the elements that exist in our universe, and they're called isotopes of one another, and they happen at different percentages out there. So for example, this is a pi diagram of lithium, and you can see we have two different isotopes of lithium, lithium-6 and lithium-7 shown in this graph. And you can see that the majority of what is occurring, the abundance of it that's occurring in our universe is that lithium-7 is much more abundant, much more out there, right? Um, now, if we look at our mass number, isn't that making sense? We have 6.941. This number is incredibly close to seven, and the other one is lithium-6. So it's much closer to seven than it is six. Okay, so it's going to be percentage based off of the abundance of what occurs in nature. So what in the world is an isotope? Just for a little bit of a review, it's going to be atoms that have the same number of protons, so they're the same element name, but they have different number of, of neutrons, and the neutrons are what are changing, therefore their atomic mass is changing as well. So if we look at some of these here, we have carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. They are all named based off of their atomic mass because if we change the number of neutrons, we are changing their atomic mass. And you can see that is the only thing that's changing um, here going on. So we have six protons, which identifies it as carbon. And then our number of neutrons are going to add up to that mass. So six plus six equals 12. And then six protons plus seven neutrons equals 13. And then six protons plus eight neutrons is gonna equal 14. All of these particular ones happen to be neutral, um, but you can have an isotope that is also a charged ion. So just be careful of that when you're looking at your electrons if you have um, a problem that's asking about that as well. Okay, so this is isotope notation. Let's try to see if we can figure these out. First, we need to name this isotope. Well, Li, we can look on the periodic table, and that is lithium. We need to put the little dash mark, and then we need to write its atomic mass. Isotope notation, the mass is gonna be in the upper left-hand corner. So this is gonna read lithium-6, but you're gonna put a dash in there, and it's gonna look like this, lithium-6. How many protons? The protons in isotope notation are always gonna be in the bottom left-hand corner. This is also the atomic number. So we have three for lithium, and that is what identifies it as lithium, right? Um, number of neutrons. We have to calculate this. So you're gonna have to do the atomic mass, top number, minus the number of protons, which is the bottom number. So six minus three equals three neutrons. Um, so if you were to add up your protons and your neutrons, you should be getting your atomic mass of six, right? And then um, electrons in a neutral atom are going to be equal to protons. This does not say that it's charged. It would have a um, negative or positive with a number if it was a charged ion, and it does not over here. Therefore, we can assume this is neutral. So three protons, three electrons would be the answer for that. And then the mass is going to be six AMU, and I just put that down here, AMU, standing for atomic mass unit. Let's try another one. This one is almost identical, however, it is an isotope of the last one. So it's still lithium, but now we need to write dash seven. Pause the video if you wanna try the rest of these, and I'm gonna tell you the answers right now. So lithium dash seven, how many protons? It's the same. Um, lithium will always have three protons, no matter what, and that will never change, right? Now, the neutrons are changing because this is an isotope of it. So we do the mass, atomic mass, minus the number of protons, so seven minus three equals four. So four neutrons, and we can double check that. Neutrons plus protons should equal our mass. So three plus four equals seven. And then again, in a neutral atom, there's no charge here. So in a neutral atom, protons and electrons are the same, so three. And then we have seven AMU as our mass number. Last one to try out. You can pause and check your answers. All right, let's do this. 
So lithium is still going to be our element. We need to write a dash and then the atomic mass at the end, which is eight. Um, our protons are still going to be the same, the bottom left-hand corner, and that is going to be the three. It's what identifies it as lithium. We need to find or calculate the number of neutrons. So atomic mass eight minus protons three, and that's going to be five neutrons. Double check. Five plus three equals eight, we're good to go. And then our electrons are gonna be still equal to protons since we do not have a written charge here. So that's gonna be three and our mass is eight amu. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and get into our next thing. So what is the mass of each isotope? Which one would be the most abundant? You can see here we have three models, all of hydrogen. However, they are isotopes of one another. You can see that the red dot is representing our one proton, which makes it hydrogen. And then the white dots are our neutrons. This one has no neutrons, one neutron, and then two neutrons. And we can see that this has a mass of one, a mass of two, and a mass of three. So our mass are coming from our nucleus, right? So we need to look at the nucleus for that number when given a model for sure. Okay, so which one would be the most abundant? You can look at the periodic table to help you with this answer. If you look at uh, the square of hydrogen and you look at the mass number, you can see that it is 1.0079. So this is very close to one. Because it is so close to one, it is definitely gonna be the one that has the mass closest to one, which is this one. Um, hydrogen only has one, AMU in this particular model or isotope of it. So uh, hydrogen one is going to be the most abundant in our universe. There still are hydrogen two and hydrogen three out there, right? Which is why it is not a whole number. That's why it is a decimal because there are other ones impacting this atomic number. I mean, yeah, atomic mass, excuse me, on the periodic table. But the majority of what we have out there in our universe is hydrogen one. All right. Which carbon isotope is the most abundant? Let's try it again. Pause this video and see if you can figure it out. Okay, so we have our square here and we can see that it is 12.011. So it's most likely gonna be very close to 12. So carbon 12 is going to be it. And we can see if we added up our protons and neutrons, we would get 12 if they did not give you this. You can always just add those up to see what the mass is, right? Um, so this one is gonna be the most abundant in our universe. There are carbon 13 and carbon, carbon 14 out there, which is why we have a decimal in the first place. All right, mass spectrometry, something completely different, but we're still talking about isotopes. We're still talking about their abundance. Now we're just putting it in a graphical form. So how many isotopes are shown? Each isotope is shown by a line on the graph. So you can see we have one line and we have a second line. So we have two isotopes shown on this graph. They are um, chlorine 35 and we have chlorine 37. So those are the two isotopes that we're looking at here. Which isotope of chlorine would be considered the most abundant? Well, we have intensity percent and we have the mass and the charge. So we need to look for which line is the tallest, okay? If we're looking for the most abundant, we're looking for the most out there in our universe, the most intensity. So chlorine 35 is going to be the one that is um, a lot higher up on our graph than chlorine 37. And if we look over here at our periodic table, just to kind of check it, we can see that our number is 35.453. So 35, so it's very close to 35 almost exactly. However, we can see why we have a slightly larger number because we also have one that's slightly larger at 37. So this one is much more abundant in our universe than 37 is. Let's try one more. So which isotope would be considered to be the most abundant on this particular graph? And this one we have three isotopes going on, one, two, and three. And you can see they are um, a mass of 24, a mass of 25, and a mass of 26. And this is the percent abundance that we're seeing on this graph here. So which one is the most abundant? It's gonna be the one with the highest percentage abundance. So the one that's 82.8 is definitely gonna be it. And which element do you think this would be? It, this doesn't say on our graph. 
So we have to go back to our periodic table and try to figure this out. If I look up on the periodic table, the mass of 24, I can see uh, if I'm going through each little square that 24.32 is magnesium. I would want to find an element that is super close to 24, but is just over it. Why over it? Because I have a mass of 25 and I have a mass of 26, so it needs to be slightly over it. I would not look for one that is really close to 24, but under it, because I don't have any isotopes that are underneath 24, less than 24. They're all over 24, so I need to find one with one slightly above 24. Magnesium lines up perfectly, therefore this is what the L, this is what um, this graph is showing, is showing magnesium. I hope this was helpful, you guys. Go ahead and subscribe to see more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.